I, um, where to begin? Pastor Paul said a while ago that it says in the book of Psalms in chapter 2, Psalm chapter 2, verse 12, it says there, he said, kiss the son lest he be angry. That's what Christians say. If you open up the King James Bible, it says kiss the son. There's only a little problem. Nashu bar. What does bar mean in Hebrew? Bar levav. Pure, clean. What the church did, Psalm 2.12 is an embarrassment to Christianity. Because it demonstrated the extent that they were willing to go. To change the Bible to make it appear Christological. What the text says is Nashku Bar means embrace purity. Maybe Hashem, all, all, or else Hashem will be angry. How do you change the word of God? How do you play games? The word Bar means son in Aramaic, not in Hebrew. There is no Aramaic in the book of Psalms. In fact, a little bit early on in Psalm chapter 2, it is 2 verse 7, it says that B'ni you are my son. King David knew exactly how to speak Hebrew, and he was speaking Ben, he meant Ben, he would say, how do you change the word of God? How do you alter what it says in the text? And if you're going to play with my Bible, and I don't mean that to you personally, because you are, a, and I say this with respect, but you're a victim of the church, of the cross. How do you change the word of God? How do you alter what it says? And if you're going to play with my Bible, you think I'm going to get baptized? Destroy my relationship with the God of Israel? There's a, a Jewish joke. Why did God create Mormons? So Christians would know how Jews feel. <laughs> Are these jokes too complicated for the section of the guy? I can slow the whole program down. I've got a napkin full of notes, so we're going to move through them very quickly. Every one of the points that you just heard from Pastor Paul is a testimony to what the church did, how it altered the Jewish scriptures. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 13. Verse 14 says, Behold, the young woman is with a child. The word Alma means a young woman. The only word that fully encapsulates and conveys sexual purity is only the word Betula, never the word Alma. Alma only conveys gender and youth. To prove the point, the word Alma appears twice in the masculine of the Bible. It appears in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 17, verse 56, and the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 20, 22, verse 20. Two places we find the word Elam, not Alma. And I want to ask every question, Christian the question is this. If the word Alma, and therefore Elam, same word, means a virgin, how come there's not one Christian Bible in the whole world in any language that translates the word Elam as a virgin? Not one! What the church did was alter the Jewish scripture so it appears Christological. The sign isn't even the woman. The sign is that the next verse is verse 15 and 16, which declares there that before the child, cream and honey will the child eat, for he knows to reject bad and choose good. For before that, these two kingdoms who seek to destroy you, it's talking about the Ephraimite Syria war 2,700 years ago, hundreds of years before the advent of Christianity, has nothing to do with the teaching of the church. Pastor Paul said, hey, one second, not so fast. He argues, hey, you know, they're rabbis wrote a Septuagint, a translation from the Hebrew Bible into the Greek language, and guess what? And what's very important about his argument, so you understand, is the claim of the churches, or the claim of Christian missionaries, is not really the church, is that the Septuagint, after all, was translated about two centuries before the advent of Christianity. How odd is it that on Isaiah 7, 14, the rabbi, 72 of them, that's hence the name Septuagint, put the word Parthenos in there. Parthos can only mean a virgin, you just heard, which is not true. Parthenos can mean a young woman who's not a virgin. So look at Genesis chapter 34, where Dina is raped. And after she is raped and Shem wants to marry her, she is called a Parthenos, although she is no virgin. 
But that's not the real answer. The real answer is there is no Septuagint on Isaiah. It's a fraud. Isaiah 53. He said that it says in Isaiah 53, for the transgressions of my people he was stricken. Isaiah 53, verse 8. First of all, to understand what Isaiah 53 is speaking about, if it's Isaiah 53, that means that there are 52 chapters that precede it. Who is the servant? He says it's not Isaiah, and he's right. The Bible tells us who the servant is. If you're writing this down, get your pen ready. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 8 and 9. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 7 and 11. Isaiah 44, verse 1. Isaiah 44, verse 21. Isaiah 45, verse 4. Isaiah 48, verse 20. Isaiah 49, verse 3. It says, my servant is Israel. I didn't put it there, the Bible says it. So the question is, and he says, it's in the singular, it's in the singular. Isaiah, and again, please, nothing personal, but Isaiah 43. Atem, <laughs> it says, you are my witnesses. Atem eidainu Hashem, avdi Hashem b'charti. You are my witnesses, plural, my servant, singular. What is the prophet saying? Now what Tovi is saying. The prophet says that the servant are the witnesses. Avdi, my servant, singular. And then, Nebuch, tragically, what the church has done to our holy book, Isaiah. The words in Isaiah 53, verse 8, Ami Pesha Ami Nega Lomo. It was translated, it's not his fault, it's in his Christian Bible. Translated, for the transgression of my people, he was stricken. It's a lie. Again, not personal. I have a great respect for you, and he and I are friends, and we talked on the phone. This is the teachings of the church. The word lamo does not mean to him, it means to them. Lo means to him. Eish das lamo. In fact, the word lamo appears throughout the Bible. Whether it's Genesis chapter 9, throughout the Bible, why does the church translate this simple word to them only in Isaiah 53 is to him? How do you change the Bible? Why? Isaiah 42 describes the servant. Isaiah 41, 8 and 9 already describes the servant as Jacob and uh, the servant as Israel. Isaiah 43, clearly speaking about Israel, 45, gone all through to each and every time, it says my servant is always Israel. He claims Isaiah 42, the servant is Jesus. But he reads to the beginning of the chapter, but the chapter keeps talking about the servant. A very interesting thing in Isaiah 42, verse 18 and 19, what does it say there? Who is blind but my servant? Who is deaf but the messenger whom I sent? Is Jesus then deaf and blind? Hosea 11, 1, out of Egypt have I called my son. Open up Hosea 11, verse 1. It's, a, it's, an, it's an indictment against the Christian Bible. Because Hosea 11, verse 1 says, when the Israel was a child, I loved him. And I called my son out of Egypt, Exodus 4.22. How does the book of Matthew alter the Jewish scriptures, misquote the book of Hosea? How do you change the Bible? And if you are going to change and alter my scriptures, my holy word, you think I'm going to get baptized? You think if I've got a choice between, between Calvin and the God of Israel, you think I have to think for a moment about that? I'm not sure why you would say blessed will you take refuge in the sun when no such text exists. It only exists in the imagination of the church. When God speaks to, um, when God speaks to, don't, don't applaud me, you applaud Hashem, it's the God of Israel. I, I just pray that Hashem will just allow me to be his vessel. When God speaks of the remnant, he speaks of many, not one. In Zechariah 8.23 it says in those days, and again it's all messianic, no, I would never use a text that Christians don't believe is messianic to adjudicate a debate like this. It would be silly. These are texts that are clearly messianic. It says there, ten Gentiles of different languages will grab the shirt of a Jew and say, take us with you, because now we know that God is with you. Now in English it sounds like it may be singular, but the Hebrew says, nel ha'imachem. Is that one person or imachem means with you many? Look to the Bible, look to the scripture, it's there for all to know. Nelcha imachem does not mean I will go with you, Jesus. It means I will go with you, the Jewish people. Thank you. Here's, I'm going to say something you don't expect me to say. So listen like you've never listened in your life. We as Jewish people do not have a monopoly on believing that the Hebrew language is holy. 
Christians all believe that the Tanakh, the, he, the Bible, the Hebrew, the Jewish scriptures, was conveyed to the prophets of Israel in Hebrew with some Aramaic, which is essentially a sister language of Hebrew, which is say Hebrew. The problem is that Christians nowhere teach their children Hebrew. If it was important to the church, the children would not get a translation of a translation of a translation of a translation. Now why don't they, they have Christian schools, just like we have Hebrew schools, yeshiva. Why aren't, full, why isn't Philadelphia filled with K-8 schools where they teach their children Hebrew? After all, Christians believe that Hebrew is holy. The reason the church the does not the teach Hebrew children Hebrew can't dare teach children the Hebrew language as we do with our children, of course, if the children of the church understood the Hebrew language, they were intimate, if they can read the word of God in its original, they would leave the church and embrace Jerusalem. Thank you.